Village of Newponts. And there have been a number of additions to the agenda uh, since I sent, sent the first draft. I think they're all reflected in the brand new one. And uh, so today is the eve of the implementation of the plastic bag law. And just in time, we received our supply of American made washable cloth shopping bags. And the way that worked out, the uh, village purchased about 1,200, roughly 1,200 bags. And of those, almost 300 went to family of Newports, 50 Salvation Army, 300 each to St. Joseph's and United Methodist Church, which have food pantries, uh, 100 to Newport Central School District, and 250 remain with the village clerk. Uh, private fundraising provided about another roughly 800 bags, which are being distributed uh, in parcels of 15 bags per business on a first come, first served basis. And the 250 that are still with the clerk, are those the ones that we're giving out at Earth Day? Um, I'm holding back 50 for that. Okay, 50 cents. Yep. Let's see, so that is the uh, pre implementation planning. And uh, I've seen a bunch of the posters and stickers up in. Uh, in some businesses, that was good to see. I had a question from a business owner who still has some bags left, and we know Handmade still has some bags left. Um, they were asking if we had any suggestions, and I did Google it, and there are you know, there are a bunch of uses for uh, those sorts of plastic bags. I was wondering if we might have a contest, um, either by the Maroon at New Falls High School or by the Oracle at SUNY, and ask students like, what would you suggest? You know, we we ignorant old people who have done this to our world with plastic bags, what do you suggest we do with the extras? I just uh, yeah, thought that might be a good way to engage uh, engage that part of the community. Um, family might be a nice idea. Have family do it? Or if family can take them. Because they're, they're not selling anything, they're just giving things away. Right? That's true, but they, they stopped uh, they giving out plastic bags a year ago. Excellent. Family did, yeah. So we wouldn't want them to start up again. But, <laughs> but um, that was not a question. Uh, one of the other businesses uses recycled plastic bags. And the question is, since, we're re since these are recycled and repurposed, is it okay for us to use these bags? And I think uh, we should talk about that because there'd probably be you know, different answers around the table. Sorry, Tom, you said 15. Hmm? 15? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, our, our plan was to put them in stacks, right side up, upside down, right side up, upside down. Yeah. We can do this during the meeting, too. I have nothing to do right now, so. We'll... Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right. Hands on. Um, so do you want to have a discussion now? Yeah. I like the idea of doing the contest. I'm in favor of this. I say nay to recycled plastic bags. Because the law, and I guess I would want to look at the law again, but the idea is giving out a plastic bag at the point of sale. And I think that it's kind of a slippery slope to be like, it's a recycled plastic bag. How, like, you know, like, what, how do we know it's recycled? We don't have Where bag inspectors yet. You know, like, if, if the idea is giving out a plastic bag at the point of sale, it's a plastic bag going into our community. Okay. And I was at the big club, so the, the you know, alternative sets are already yeah, the, in our the opposite point would be it's uh, it's a way to reuse and, and repurpose these bags. Um, I think, well, that's, I'm sorry. Hey, John. Hello, how's it going? How are you? All right. Uh, so we have a, a business that um, is being conscious and, and responsible. And they're using re repurposed plastic bags that they may have gotten a shop right or somewhere else, or I don't know where they get them, I shouldn't say that. But the question is, since we are recycling them and reusing them, being responsible, is it okay for us to continue this practice? And um, Dennis, John, you got any, uh, any thoughts on that? Like Joanna said, I'd like to see what the actual law states. That might be a good place to start. And there's really no way to monitor or assess that going forward, whether they're really repurposed bags, and you know, and not that I doubt the intentions of this business owner, but it just might open up a can of worms for other businesses and other people looking to exploit loopholes. Are you able to pull up the law? See what the language. No pressure. Okay. To do. Um, and you're just walking into this cold. Yeah. So. No. I, uh, <laughs> My take on it, having read the law several times, I would think it's uh, antithetical to what the law states, which is that you can't use plastic, single-use plastic bags at the point of retail sale. So this is a point of retail sale, and it is a single-use plastic bag. 
we might want to say because it's a recycled bag that it is morally correct and it upholds the the uh, sort of spirit of the law. Um, but I would argue that another part of the spirit of the law would be to take those bags out of use altogether. In other words, you're removing them as a pollutant from the environment. Um, so my personal opinion would be that the law would prohibit it the way that I read it. Um, and then to go a step further, our, our ultimate goal would be to remove plastic bags from use um, within the village and, and would, you know, eliminate them as a pollutant. So I would, I would say while it's a great idea before the law, the law make, makes it unnecessary. Um, I think the uh, supermarkets uptown, one of, I think Stop and Shop, has a plastic bag recycling facility. So we may want to ask them to direct that, you know, those bags to that source. Okay. I, that's just my personal take. Well, I, I originally kind of felt the other way, but the enforcement argument is kind of compelling. We didn't, we didn't hire someone to enforce this law. It's something that the building inspector will do along with many, many, many other responsibilities. So to put the burden on a very overworked and stretched thin employee to try to determine the difference between recycled bags and new bags, I think we just don't want to see them coming out of the stores. And I think one point is that like the idea is single use, and even if in this case they're not single use, the chances are that the person that's getting them is the, it, maybe it's like double, you know what I mean? Like I don't think that it's like that person gets it and then brings it back, and the next person gets it and brings it back, which makes it like a continuously reusable bag. What's likely happening is that yes, they're reusing them from let's say Stop and Shop, then they're giving them to somebody and they're going back, you know, like into the streets or into the river. You know, it's not like it becomes a reusable bag. It gets reused once and then it's very little more than a single use bag. Good point. Even if you're going to argue that it's no longer single use by reusing it. So is it safe to say the consensus at the table would say uh, that's not a good thing to do and we're not going to not going to support that and we'll answer in the negative. I did the agendas from a template, and the original template used to say welcome guests and public comment, but then we didn't have any guests for a long time, so uh, welcome guests. <laughs> and if anyone wants to, has any comments or wants to address the commission in any way, please yeah, uh, take the opportunity to do so. And we'll stop talking for a minute. Okay, just didn't want to be rude to anyone in the room. Thanks for coming, everyone. Um, and I guess for the purposes of uh, television, the commission is John Starr, Dennis Young, I'm Don Kerr. Uh, Rachel Lagotka may be here late. We have Joanna Torres and Andrew Russo as our secretary. We have several esteemed guests uh, uh, in the in the audience, and thank you for coming. Uh, just made you all esteemed. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you are. Um, okay, so we would like to do a contest. Um, do you think SUNY or the high schools are better, or why don't you have them have them contest it out between the two? Yeah. yeah. All right, I'll follow up on that. I'll uh, just a possibility we could narrow it down to a SUNY suggestion and a high school suggestion and if we have a social media page we could let the, yes, the fans vote it's tying everything <laughs> together so nicely so nicely we'll get to that later well yes that's true if there's two good suggestions that's not a bad thing no. so why don't we ask them each to yeah. we should do it. we have the oracle do it in the newspaper and see if the pig class or somebody in the high school would want to yeah. take that up I don't know if you can chime in sure but I mean, uh, you may want to approach the faculty members handling the uh, partnership and government pay program at the high school. Right. Uh, they are very interested in identifying projects. And they want to be a nice environmental project that really excite them. And the fact that that teacher lives across the street from me makes it really there convenient. <laughs> okay. And frankly, even if we get like 10 great suggestions, what yeah. that means is that we can email the business owners who have expressed this concern and say, here are some of the suggestions that we've gotten. Yeah. You know, we don't have to say this is the only one that you can use with your extra bags. We could say, you know, this was a great idea that came from a SUNY New Health student. Here are some really good ideas we've also gotten if you would prefer. Well, my thinking was far too narrow on this. Thank you. No. Good, no, good, good idea. Um, all right, I like that. Uh, recycled plastic bags, yay or nay, we have done that. Uh, municipal solid waste. Jackie and I met with Jason and Ariana last week. We're compiling our takeaways to go back to them, and then we're going to come up with a list of recommendations for the RFP. We'll take it from there. 
Okay. Mr. Jackie is not here today. She's in Costa Rica. Okay. I think it's safe to say most of us are jealous. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Okay. Good stuff in the way. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we're looking to uh, get to a point where we don't have four private haulers coming down every street in the village, and see if we might be able to think it out by doing some sort of either municipal thing where the, the village itself runs the, the trash collection or contracts with one vendor to uh, hopefully cut down on costs because they have to bid and compete for the, the contract. Uh, we're having the municipality do it, do it themselves. So good. All right. Looking forward to hearing more about that. Uh, we need to, and I guess I need to make a formal recommendation to the village uh, after our 60-day energy challenge. Um, that whole thing started with the Central Hudson thing because they needed to buy a new emergency backup generator. And the question was, do we use a, an oil one or do we, do we retool for natural gas? And Central Hudson stepped in and, and had what looked to be a, a, a good uh, suggestion. Um, but at the end of that whole process, they never got an emergency backup generator. I guess we, we got them off the track so, so efficiently that it is in process. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right. We're getting an from the engineer. We okay. And we already had the financing. I love crossing things off. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, now, I have here as the next item the recommendation to the village on streetlights. Yep. Um, I was asked by the village board to come up with a solar panel streetlight for the parking lot down by the Walk Hill, down by the Sioux Stream plant, the parking lot down there. Uh, after several weeks, I found a couple. I was trying to get an idea of what the specs are for the ones that we have as far as wattage, you know, just trying to figure out what we would need because there's such a range of product that, you know, like, I don't know which one has the specs that we need. Um, I did get an answer last week on what we are currently using, and it looks like the wattage for the two that I found are a little too low, so I think I'm going to go back to the drawing board. Um, but I did find two that were in the character of the village. That was one of the things that I was looking at. Um, but my understanding is that the wattage of the streetlights that we use is between 50 and 250 watts, um, which is quite a range. Most um, of those streetlights are 75. Oh, that was really helpful. Yeah, and there are some 250s. 50 and 250 was like really hard for me to be like, what do we need? There's really, there's really, you're looking at 75s or, and you can look up underneath. You can see that if you look underneath the street lights, it says, says 7.5 or 25. Do you know the parking lots? Would that be like 70? Would that be on the low end? Probably, the probably 75s. Okay. Um, which is most street lights. Like you can see the the big the ones that really illuminate like a parking lot. Or I think there's I think there's one right on the uh, between here and Main Street. that's a 250. Okay. So you'll be able to really if you notice drive by or walk by, you'll you'll notice the difference okay. in the in the brightness. But we're probably looking for 75. So now, the and then the question that I have, and I need to speak, I need to go back now that I know the wattage, is that um, solar street lights use LED lights in them, and LED lights are generally brighter. So I don't know if that changes, like, I don't know. So I need to talk to them, um, because one of them that I found was 15, so obviously that's not enough. The other one uses two 30s. Um, which sounds like it's too low, um, but I just need to go back to the drawing board and see what I can find that's in the 75 law degree. And, uh, and then I'll be recommending that to the um, You will be here to April? I will. This is my second to list. Okay. Right. Well, congratulations on, uh, on uh, Home relocating homeownership. <laughs> I hope we will be really sorry to lose you on the, uh, on the village uh, environmental policy commission. So finish this up, lady. <laughs> Thanks. Yep. And, and whatever you know, just you know, get ready to head over to someone else. Well, that's nice. Thank you. They really have an environmental board in town. Yeah, I, I don't really, uh, I don't really like the liaison phone line. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Slim. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was just doing some doodling. Thirty percent of the people in this room are. Announced candidates for office. That's pretty good. <laughs> Two mayoral candidates. Is that all? Is that all? Yep. Yeah, oh, I don't like to announce my candidates. <laughs> <laughs> Make it 36 percent. All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so we'll be hearing more uh, next meeting about uh, street lights uh, down by the, the sewage plant. Um, signage on the wall kill. The signs are done. Yay. 
And when the village has their next meeting and hopefully approves to pay for these signs, which I don't see any reason they wouldn't, uh, we'll put them up. It'll be before the regatta, That's which was great. always the goal, and kind of before the spring. And if I recall, the language says uh, citizen sampling has shown unhe unhealthy uh, level of contaminants in the river based on EPA standards. And there is a link to a URL that goes to the poster, which is now posted on the village website. And there's also a QC code. Oh, that's great. Which I had a to find out what, what was called. I have a question. So we have all those things. What are the odds that it'll be up before Earth Day? Uh, assuming the village approves the purchase next Wednesday. Uh, very good. Because they're done. They're ready. Yeah, I mean, like, I know it sounds like I'm really done up on Earth Day, but I think that's like a really cool opportunity for the EPC to sort of give a little taste of what we've done. Yeah. Oh, or a ribbon cutting. That's true. But, that's true. Um, but it would be like a great opportunity for us or like a couple of us to just be there and be able to say, you know, like, this is what we're working on. This is what we've already accomplished. This is what we're looking at accomplishing. You know, we'd love for you to come to our meeting, share your input. We're looking for researchers, you know. Just, this week. just you know, we have a Facebook now. We have this sign up. Go look at it. We're going to be getting a solar panel street. You know, those kind of things just so that we can get the word out a little bit more. Not that I think that like the entire village is going to be there, but. Do you think we should have an extra meeting before Earth Day? I just realized we're this is kind of our last opportunity to talk about that date, and I don't really see much on the agenda that I prepared. Guilty as charged. Do you want a table at it? Hmm? Do you want a table at it? Yeah, I think we've talked about that. Okay, so maybe we can just meet to table meet about tabling. Yeah, yeah. that's a good idea. You want to meet? Uh, hmm. You're moving a little too fast, you know. Maybe we can talk about it tonight. Okay. All right, well, let's, let's uh, come back to that. And what I was meaning to mention the last item, uh, there's a municipal streetlight forum on uh, April 2nd from 4 to 6 at the Legislative Chambers on Fair Street in Kingston. So they'll be discussing uh, LED lighting and, and new new trends, new information, new technology. It would be great so, to attend one of those, you know, if they didn't schedule all of them during, like, typical work hours. Mm -hmm. That's where the legislators work, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great. Uh, I agree. Um, Since we make so much money serving on this commission. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to... Uh, day off? <laughs> I, you know, it's an item of like, personal interest that I, I would like to see if we'd like to embrace as a commission. Uh, we, I think most of us, many of us got an email from Riverkeeper saying they're about to start their next round of testing for the year. Mm -hmm. And we had spoken about Tributary 13 which is the one that goes, you know, by ice. I'd like to see if we, I, you know, I definitely would be interested in doing testing, aggressive testing on Tributary 13 for Riverkeeper and give them the results because they're doing the river proper. They are a volunteer organization without a lot of, lot of legwork or manpower. We have person power. So, I, you know, I don't know what would be entailed, but I think it's just going down to the, the stream of, once a month. Like an adopt a tributary? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> 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 the BMW will buy the tests, or they have bought the tests in the past for E. coli, which is a, really good, a good thing, I think, for us to test for anyhow. The only thing is that when you collect the samples, you have to get them to the lab within a certain number of hours, or, else, hours. The, yeah. or else the tests aren't good. So it would just be a matter of just setting something like that up and just making sure we get the samples tested, you know, and we could, I don't know, I started talking to the biology department again, we'll, I can bring that up. I think I might have finally found a live wire <laughs> there, <laughs> but, uh, we do the testing at City? Yeah, well, they've done that before. I had a student do it before. The problem was that she didn't get the samples back to the lab in time, okay. and so that, that test got screwed up, but you need to take lots of tests anyhow. So well, I am uh, self-employed in New Paltz, and I have a car. Where so if we can coordinate the, you know, the, get all the, t I'd the be jars very taken at the same in, time, I can transport them that. Uh, you know, once a month or you know, however often they need to be. Because I, f I feel like that's really important because that's our contribution of pollution into the wall bill. That's the worst thing. Yeah. And it shouldn't be dirty because it goes through the preserve. Exactly. So if we can find out where the poops are exactly. in that should be clean stream, all right, that's the next step. So I will reach out to uh, Dan Shapley and Jan Epstein at Riverkeeper and ask them to tell us what to do. So your, your thought is to sort of 
offshoot the official um, her official request to see if anyone wants help with what they have scheduled yes. for sampling. Because this this commission has particular interest right. in, in that, that tributary and it's the worst one in going into the walk -in. So this would be if we well, expand so your can, efforts, can you absorb the testing? Would be the right. question. And it, they may already be planning to include that. I don't think so. Oh okay. well, it's it's more expensive, I think. They test for I don't know. Sorry. Well, <laughs> they well, test for like paying. metabolites of some kind. Huh? I assume they're paying for this testing. Riverkeeper? Yeah. 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 We, there is they the testing they do tests for E. coli bacteria. But it can't distinguish whether it's human or animal. Right, right. So it's the expensive test that could tell you that. Yes, and that's what we want. Because we want to know if it's from people's septic systems or if it's from animal waste somehow. I mean, I kind of did. Yeah, we want yeah, to know. Well, I, I think if we can locate where in the tributary it starts to get fouled, those answers will reveal themselves. Yeah, we'll still do, do the testing. But even if they don't do the advanced testing, if we find out it's clear here and you know 30 feet later it's not right. that gives us you know what's, what's over there and what's over there you know, so we should be able to do some detective work so uh, yes on both cases but if they can't if they don't have the money at least we'll be able to start doing the, doing the legwork to figure this stuff out um you want to push later rachel uh, critical environmental areas to a little later in the meeting you said you might have a researcher coming yes or, do you? Huh? Are you here? Oh, I just sent you a text asking you if you were here. Right. <laughs> I looked at you and thought, I wonder if that's her. I wonder if that's her. <laughs> yes, actually, she's here. This is Julie. Hi. Hey. Hi. Well, you are an esteemed guest. I knew that. And I'm running for mayor. Get in line. Get in line. <laughs> at least you're real. There's someone running for mayor who's not real. Just oh. A Facebook entity. <laughs> Um, so, uh, this was your item of interest, and we do have, as I understand from the last meeting, we do, there does exist a critical environmental area map in New Pulse. Are you aware of that, or were you talking about getting to create a new one? Well, oh, I'm you weren't here at that last meeting, okay. No, I... Yeah, a guest we had uh, informed us that we did indeed have one. Are you... okay, who made it? Well, he needs to know more about it than anyone in the room. Well, who, who made the map? What's Joe's name? Was it was Randall? Was that my guest? Randolph Warner? Yeah, yeah. There's a number of he made a, areas map. But he okay, could, there's a number of maps he could be referring to, possibly. Um, there's a wetland map of the village that was done by Hudsonia. And the, the two correlate because wetlands are critical areas that we want to preserve. Okay, well, since we don't have a critical environmental area, why don't you, why don't you start with what, uh, what you're going to bring up? Well, I think you may have covered up the microphone. Oh, sorry about that. Um, well, there were a number of things. Um, I, I think that that, that that map, and I think um, Jason has said previously that he would accept that map as the start, at least, or, or even as a complete uh, critical area map. The map that Hudsonia did showing the, the wetlands. Critical environmental areas don't have to be environmental. It can be a lot of historic, it can be cultural. Right. So it's a broad category. They can be, yes. And one of the reasons we don't have a I don't have a map accepted is because um, there were so many arguments about what should be on a critical area, environmental area map. And so it sort of became I think political in a sense because um, the reason we never got one accepted and didn't become a board was because people on the board were arguing amongst between each other um, about what should be considered a critical environmental area map and it's, it was one of those one of those things some people wanted a lot more detail I mean you could go down to the person who wanted the most detail wanted you know to know exactly what percentage of each lot in New Paltz that could possibly have been developed more hadn't been developed. <laughs> that would have taken like a lot of math. And then, you know, if you look at the map the town used, it's it's just a wetlands map. It's not a very specific. Well, that's that's where um, we can come in and help um, the process because we so can have those conversations and recommend something. Yes. And then they have to tell um, us why they wouldn't accept it. Yeah, so uh, this is this is the map that 
was talking about, like I've shown you guys this map before, like that's the that's the Hudsonian map, but it's been slightly enhanced by uh, a student um, just to show the different different kinds of wetlands. But that one's on the uh, this one actually here. Yeah, I have a couple of copies of it, um, but uh, it doesn't really. It's it's not um, not maybe as, as detailed as we want. And then Jason, he said that someone was uh, working on the map, but then they were going away or something like that. Um, so, because I mean, if we have we have all this information, and if we have village consultants who are making the map, then that's the map that the uh, board is more likely to accept. You know. Well, I'm guessing um, that was a reference to a letter. Who yeah. Have so, to relocate for family reasons. Yeah. So I'm not sure at what stage we're at. This is the map that the town uh, used. You see how the village is this white block blob in the middle. <laughs> but as you can see, it's not you know, it's not hugely detailed. I mean, I wouldn't mind getting down to like really detailed. If you look at this map here, it's just I don't know a map. You might want to see. Um, this is from the um, the Millbrook report, and it shows which part of the preserve right now is um, in a conservation easement. That's what the, the black stripes are, and then um, it's also got you know various the habitats color coded. Um, but what it doesn't really have is, I mean, actually. If you were to say, well, what's the most critical, you know, or sensitive environmental area on the map, it would be this right here, which is kind of ironic because this is part of it's it's inside what's considered to be the critical preserve area, but but that's um, this is where the salamanders are breeding that live all over around it here, and if you look here, these two little lines are the critter crossings that they made, which of course the salamanders never use because they're cement tunnels underneath the road and they have to have wet wetness in order to travel but um, so I mean you know this also this is this is a federal wetland so that would be included but it would be nice to have I mean, we have the shape files we have access to we had like these expensive maps made for that report that's on the town website if you want to look at it um, you have to go on the town website and you go to see wasp the um, uh, wetlands and open space preservation committee. You go to, to that link, and then there's a, then there are links to different reports, and then if you click that, you'll get to the to the the current Millbrook Preserve, which has all these maps, but much much smaller. Okay, let me see if I can summarize this and try and take it to a, a logical next step. Okay. We have a lot of maps. Yes. Critical environmental maps, area maps are good but they can have many different de definitions. Correct. So as the effort you are looking to undertake is to try to get some sort of either combination of some of these maps that are already created, put them together, and create one master map, or see, I'm not, I, we need there a are map too many, too many variables okay, here for me to that's, understand. That's it. right. The variables have to do with having the, the map accepted. And so it has to be a map that the village board will accept, and that's the bottom line. We can we can work, you know, as we ha as this commission has in, in previous incarnations, work really hard on making a map. This is a map we came up with. Um, but if the village board doesn't accept it, or if they have, then then all we have is a map. This is a nice, and it's a really nice map. So can a next step be to, before making a map, to meet or to present to the village board what we're looking to do and ask them what they would like to see in the map? That way you don't waste your time making a map that you then present to them and they say, we're not going to accept this. Right. So we could, yeah, I, I, yeah that, that doesn't sound bad. I mean, I mean uh, usually it's not like a really big contentious issue. Right. <laughs> I mean, it shouldn't be that hard to get a map passed. That's well, I think if we, uh, if we yes. were to ask the question and get clear direction in what, what elements do you want to see in a map, 
and write that down yeah. and, and do it and bring it back to them. Yeah, I think. But isn't what Rachel was saying that previously the village board had difficulty agreeing on what should be included in the map? That is correct. And therefore, another alternative would be to make a recommendation ourselves, which you just said moments well, ago. Well, there's the two, the two ways. Right. There. So so perhaps it might be a better idea for us to first discuss what we thought, think should be in the map and then make the recommendation to the village board, this is what we think should be in the map. And if that, that is works. acceptable to them, we would then begin the work of creating the map that we that have those features. And if there was disagreement, they wouldn't be starting from a blank page. Right. They would have our recommendations to say, this piece, this piece. And if there's disagreement, we wouldn't have already made the map. We would come to them, get those disagreements worked out, and then make the map. Right, or maybe even get them to agree to a map, agree to the criteria, right, exactly. and then make the map. So then once we have the map, they can't say, oh, this isn't what right. we wanted. I think that's, the, that's the right okay. way forward. So we come with a recommendation. We get them to agree to something. Um, so, yeah. Um, I'm wondering if, Jason, you could just give us um, kind of an idea of, I know the that Brian, before she left, had been planning to do some kind of mapping. I don't know if she got anywhere with it and what the, was involved. She was taking the Hudsonian data layers and putting them in GIS and just creating a new document. That was mostly finished before she left, but we're going to have to wait on the next matter of attention. The okay. village board did not trust, uh, enough of the village board did not trust that Sony is map to just use it as is. I disagree with that, but that's going to be one of the concerns is who, who is providing the data? Are they legitimate professionals or are they just people who want to preserve a local whatever? Uh, The only I, I say that only because it's come up in the past with the Hudsonian map, which was done by a, a reputable scientific research organization and still uh, was questioned by the village board as to whether it was accurate, whether it was worthwhile, whether it was useful. Uh, so in light of what the, the planner was doing, is the effort that we're talking about already in progress? It's on pause until we get into the plan. Who knows GIS? Mm -hmm. So but there's, there was like a... Like Initial beginning to the, like there's something. Yeah, the well, I think since since the map has not been actually done, and getting criteria for what should be in the map would be helpful to the village board in evaluating and accepting it at the end. It would be helpful for whoever makes the map in making it. I still think it's a good idea to for us to make recommendations and say any such work product should. Have, should involve these these components, and that way, as the work goes forward, they'll make sure it includes those components, or they won't accept our recommendation. They won't be able to argue the point or at least advise. So I think um, let's all, as homework, uh, between now and, and and the April meeting, just think in terms of what attributes we would want to see, and anyone with expertise in the in the area, if you want to you know, give us some suggestions, because. You know, we'd be very appreciative of that. Um, and I, my goal would be if we can come up with consensus among ourselves in April, uh, we could bring those suggestions to the to the village board in late April or, or May. I think Jason's got something. Oh, sorry. Um, it would probably be useful for folks to just Google critical environmental areas and DEC. Because they have the DEC has a website up that explains what a critical environmental area is. It's not just a descriptive term; it's a term of art in law. Um, it's, there are specific things that have to happen for something to be designated a critical environmental area. Okay. And if something is designated a CEA, then there are um, restrictions or at least hoops that the planning board has to follow once it's designated. If, if, for example, it becomes a Type One action. No matter what else is happening on the property, which requires uh, really just requires a longer environmental assessment form of the applicant. There's also uh, a map that could be drawn of open space that needs to be protected in the village, and that open space inventory, which I believe Rachel began uh, under the prior iteration of this commission, 
once an uh, open space inventory is mapped and adopted by the municipality, the, in, your board is usually called a CAC, a Citizens Environment, uh, Advi Conservation Advisory Commission. Um, so lots of communities, we just call, we change the rules and call it an ECP instead. Um, but you can become a, a, a board instead of a commission if the, board, if the village board adopts that open space inventory. And what that means is that the planning board would then have to ask for your input, your formal input, on any proposals that impact those properties. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, that, so there's, there's potentially two different purposes of mapping um, environmental areas in the village. One is to designate critical environmental areas, which can be historic and cultural as well. Like Huguenot Street, we may want to designate as a critical environmental area. Or trees above a certain diameter of breast height. You know, just that whole trees could be a good one. Kind of and then there's the open space inventory, which will increase the power and influence of this board on development projects. So there might be two different way, things you could do simultaneously uh, if, you're, if you're mapping environmental areas in the building. Okay. Good. Good input, Info. Yeah, I thought we were going to have both, both those things on one map. I mean, it's just that the purpose. The, the open space being the more general uh, designation, so that you know, and then the map indicating those things, that those areas will, over which we would uh, have some, uh, not exactly, I guess, jurisdiction, but uh, I'm not sure what the, what the proper term is. But you, but that that was that was also the, the point of the map and why it becomes politically contentious. Because if someone on the board doesn't want the commission to become a board, they just won't approve the map, or they'll find some reason not to. Not to well, again, I think from a process standpoint, if if the board gives us the criteria up front for what they want a map to contain, and we deliver that, you know, I'm sure they could reject it, but it does make it more difficult yes. to do so. Yeah, but what I was saying is, it's 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 the same map. I mean, the map has the same. It's. Both criteria would be on the same map, open space and critical environment and cultural. I mean, I guess those are the those are the criteria we'd ask them whether they want it on the map at all. Um, I mean, obviously there's no Huguenot Street isn't under any threat of, you know, <laughs> it's already protected, you know, but. Well, if, um, if you and your researcher can kind of maybe give us some suggestions and get an email out before the next meeting, we'll, uh, you know, We'll, uh, we'll continue the discussion. Um, and the next item is one you also brought up, and I kind of have left it on the, the agenda, um, and we can do we can do so. I was uh, standard operating procedures at uh, Department of Public Works, mm -hmm. and we had a, a list of uh, five bullets, and I mentioned them to uh, to the, the head of the department. And mm -hmm. They were you know agreeable to. Uh, they were curious about what, what we had in mind and exactly what the concerns were. Um, greener street cleaning, and the question was, you know, what, well, could we have some examples of that? Um, uh, reduced water use, again, you know, where are we wasting water? We'll be open to discuss it. So they're just looking for specifics. Uh, that was pretty much in, uh, uh, we told them we had nothing but praise for the tree cutting on the Wolk Hill floodplain near the boat launch. Um, we were wanting to make sure they were using greener anti-weed products, and they were rather adamant that their their products are green. Um, and uh, they noted the communication with the Shade Tree Commission. Um, I was wondering if there's something simple, like if there's some sort of a, I don't know, a, a certain color ribbon or something, some sort of sign we could put on the on protected shade trees that we could let them know if you see something like this, just don't cut it down. Mm -hmm. There's some sort of simple device, you know, that wouldn't involve a lot of, because I, I don't know that they necessarily. That's what we do with the leftover plastic bags. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Synchronicity. Yes. Cages Beauty. on them. I mean, there's cages on them. That's, oh, there I don't are? think that's a big problem anymore. Okay, well, that was my idea. Did you ask them for the budget? Because I don't think you could tell how environmental anything is unless you see what they're spending money on. How well, much. that wasn't uh, wasn't one of the. Oh, it was something I emailed you. Oh, okay. anyhow, yeah, I think that I think if we're going to look at it, we have to see the budget. All right. Well, the the village budget would have DPW budget, and that's a that's a public document, would it not be? I, mean, I, I think um, that's that's knowable. I don't know. All right. Yeah, I guess 
guess so. Yeah. yeah, so I guess if, we, if we're going to look at that, we should look at that specifically. Okay. I'll get a copy of the DPW budget. And uh, we'll take a look at it that way. In the meantime, um, if there are any specific examples on some of these points that that you have, like greener street cleaning, what would that entail, and, and areas where they're using, where they might be using too much water, um, just if there were any specifics, that's what that's what they were looking for. And I want you to put you on the spot right now, but uh, no, I really think on that. Um, so Joanna sent out. Are we, so I'm, I'm just going to leave this on the on the agenda, and we'll yeah, just keep talking I don't know. about. It. Yeah, we haven't really discussed that that topic too much. It was something we all wanted to do, but I don't think any of us got down to the specifics. Yeah, well, it got the agenda, and I think you missed a couple of meetings. It just kind of lost yeah. lost momentum, so we'll okay. we'll pick it up again. Um, so Joanna sent out uh, this evening uh, a revised social media policy. I printed out one copy. Okay. Anybody didn't get the email? There's a copy here to share. We'll see it. So basically that was from the Association of Towns and it just is their policy with the town's names taken out and ETC put in, or we call it ETC. Uh, but basically it just goes through like this is what can be posted by EPC, admin, like administrators, this is what we would not post, this is what can be accepted as comments, this is what would not be accepted as comments. So some examples are like anything that's off topic of what the post was would be deleted. And what it recommends, what it says in the policy is that the paragraph about what are appropriate comments and what are not appropriate comments would be put in the, on the page itself. So maybe in like the about section, just so that everybody knows what our policy is regarding their comments. There's no confusion if something gets deleted because it's off topic or it's inflammatory, things like that. Uh, the only thing that's not in there is a policy about how we would respond, um, but I think that Dan's understanding was that um, from the Association of Towns, the consensus was that any response, um, that anything that required a response would just be, you know, we refer you to the village website or to one of our meetings. Well, that's my that's my biggest concern about the whole topic. Is the yeah, well no, back and forth. is the the uh, person power to monitor a site mm -hmm. and who would be you know responsible for that? Sometimes you know if you let something go for a couple of days, it can get bad. Yeah. And I personally don't do social media for that reason. Um, but I couldn't be the one. And you're going to be moving on. Can't you can't one. be the one. So um, if we're going to have a Facebook page and if we're going to have comments, who is going to monitor it? And um, yeah, that's the, you know, I, I don't have a Facebook page for my company for that reason. You know, I, I, I just, I have a real life and that takes all my time. <laughs> uh, so that's my, that's the big concern. Um, we were looking to create a Facebook page mainly to get the word out about different initiatives and events that we were doing. Do we have the ability to use the Villages Facebook page and say, hey, can you post this on your page? That way, we're not actually doing it. We do okay because that would be the easy solution, and we wouldn't have to monitor it. As long as it's official village business, yeah. Okay. So, can we see administrator of that? Okay. So then, if there's something that we feel that we want to get out to the community, we just need to email Katie, I assume. Otherwise, uh, Dan Torres will do all the moderation. What is the village Facebook page called? Just village and you you made it? No, no, I, that was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke. I will point out that the town Facebook page is going to relax Oh, did you know <laughs> the town Facebook page? I did not know the town Facebook page. He's not even an administrator. I was removed as an administrator. We I wear that as a badge of honor. <laughs> <laughs> what on earth did you do? <laughs> That's a whole other meeting. That's a whole other meeting. <laughs> so. All right, so we, sh we as, a, as far as um, doing the social media, we're... going to hold off and try to use the village's social media page. But I return to the question of who, since I am completely illiterate. I just don't, you know... I think well, that that can be in anybody. Like, if you're at the table, and obviously this doesn't apply to me, but my thought would be, even if I was not, like, if we're at the table and we're like, this is a really great idea, 
Or we had these great suggestions from these students about the plastic bag, uh, what to do with plastic bags. This would be a great thing to put on the social media page. Oh, I, I, just, I just got it. I thought we would have a page that would be a subset of the village page, which is, oh, I like that. Okay. No, so yeah, that that way, okay. Yeah. I get it. It I get could it. be yeah. any one of you just emailing okay. Katie Bunker and saying, hey, we'd just like this to be on the page. I think it narrows the scope of what you would want to put out if you're using the village page as opposed to the EPC page or not. I think you would post more often and with more, not frivolity, but with just more often. It's Earth Day. It's yeah. yeah. We wouldn't Here's say something we're thinking about. Discuss. Yeah, so, well, and I think the, the, um, the cost of having the more, more dedicated page is, is the, the person power. Um, you know, we will be, we're always looking for more researchers, and we will probably be looking for more commissioners uh, in the future, so that could be something, you know, we might want to stress to, or put as a requirement for a, a new commissioner. <laughs> Spoo for thought. Check social media. Yeah, exactly. that's, what the, that's what the new person well, always gets to those kinds of jobs. Yeah. Couldn't that be a commissioner's, no, because they've been come with a recommendation. To the village board. I was, I was just thinking out loud if it could be commissioners. This is what I'm going to do for the year. I'm going to put the EPC online and improve your your online footprint or whatever. But it doesn't have an association yeah, with the village board. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, good thought, though. Good thought. Are, I'm trying. Are we, <laughs> are we registered at that Walpole River, uh, the conference on the 23rd? Um, are we going to have a table? Uh, are we registered to attend it? Oh, uh, is that we, considered to be something? You know how we're supposed to do hours for being on the commission. We're supposed to put in a certain number of hours a year at educational type conferences. So my question was, does this would this? I guess this would count. Sure. And are we are we officially registered? I don't even know if there's a registration fee because no. we talked about going to that. The future of the wall kill. Yeah. It's from 4 to 8 um, There's a $10 registration fee. Uh, actually, Jason and I are part of the committee that's organizing the event. Um, so we would need to register as individuals, uh, or we need to ask the village board to to pay the $10 to uh, allow us to attend uh, as EPC members. Where is that I would like to do that. I, do that? I yeah. wanna, I'd like to do that. Okay. You'd like to ask the village board to pay for the ten dollars? Yes. Well, no, I not not personally, uh, but I mean it's a group. I want, okay. Yeah. I would yeah. like them to pay for pay the ten dollars, and uh, and I want to go. So. Okay. And also, uh, I found out about today. Uh, there's a tour of the trees on campus. If anybody's interested, it's on the same day, but it's at 11 11 a.m. Oh, cool. And you tour the whole campus, and they're going to tell you what. All the trees are. Didn't they graph them or make a map of them or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's, I've heard it's not very, it's not really accurate. <laughs> 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 the fact that it exists is a, is a good start. Yeah, they did, yeah. So that event is the day after Earth Day. It's April 23rd. It's going to be put on by Creo uh, on campus. It's 4 to 8 p.m. And there are a number of speakers who are not going to speak too long, but they're all knowledgeable in various issues related to the wall kill and, and this particular watershed. And then there'll be a uh, five topics for breakout sessions. People discuss their various interests um, and uh, conclusions at the end. And I guess the idea is to get a bunch of like-minded and interesting people together and talk about the issue and figure out what next steps are. Um, there are a number of grants out there that are available that we're pursuing, um, but I think the idea is to um, say the time is now to to begin to focus on this. It might take a decade, it might take longer, but now is the time to start all pulling in the right direction and getting this done. I think, uh, I don't remember all the slogans I heard at this afternoon's meeting, but uh, um, one that we talked about was, uh, it's not upstream, it's not downstream, it's our stream. And that's a really good way to think about it goes right to the middle of our, of our village, right to the middle of our town, and it's full of poops. And who's going to take care of it if we don't? Uh, that's my speech for the, for the week. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. to Okay. Uh, review and approve minutes. Thank you, Andrea, by the way, for, uh, for the detail and, the, and for always being there with those. 
Uh, did everyone have a chance to take a look at the minutes? Does anyone have any corrections, complaints, uh, problems? There was one name I needed. All right. You were talking about having two people come and speak, 30 minutes each. One was Randolph. Yeah. And who was the other person? That one was not for me. I don't know who that was. Uh, that was a gentleman not to check to a previous board, recommended to me by, by Mr. Ward. Okay. And I just do not recall his name. Okay. But it was on the actual email address or the name was on the previous month's agenda. Okay. Um, and I don't think we decided to follow up on that. Because okay, again, we had Randall come. So this was the February and March meeting we're talking about? That? Well, what no, we're talking about December and January's minutes okay. that have to be approved. And that must have been the December meeting, the phone meeting. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, okay, we'll check for that. Um, uh, let me just say why I have your ear. Um, uh, um, I guess we were supposed to file another report by April 1st. I thought it was June. Well, so, we, we changed uh, dates around for this year since it's our first year. <laughs> yeah, because uh, it won't be ready by April 1st. So I'll draft a, I'll draft a, the next one and we'll file it as soon as we can. What I had advised the uh, village board was since this was our first year. It's, we had so many things working that rather than do one report on April, we do one on December 1st and the other one on June 1st. Okay. And then go back to the regular schedule for our second year. All right, so I would uh, follow up with that. So uh, as we wind down this year, we're going to get to June 1st, pardon me, uh, which would be one year since we were formed. And we were formed May last year. Uh, that would be the time to pick our new issues for the next year. It'll also be the time to get the report that Andrew just spoke about about what we have accomplished this year. So once we get past Earth Day and the launch of the bag initiative, we can start talking about that. Um, so the agenda item says new causes for 2015, which I think I just addressed, um, and the fact that we're going to need to recruit some, some new members. Um, again, Joanna, we'll be really sorry to see you uh, see you moving on, but we're happy for your, for your success in life. Um, Dennis and I are hoping to have other, other places to go uh, after, <laughs> after May, uh, but that might not happen. So, we'll, uh, <laughs> but we, uh, we will need to be talking about you know, researchers as well, and it's really good to, uh, to have you here. It's really good that, that we're starting to get some momentum on that, because that's something how the work will really get done as we partner with people who have expertise in certain areas that we don't have, and, and uh, they'll, they'll bring us forward. Perhaps the Village Facebook page could put out a request for more researchers. We did find at least one that way. Right. You know, it's kind of it put, we're kind of at crunch time, we need to get some extra people in here. Based on what happens, we could have half of a board in a few months. I wonder if Jackie would be interested. I think we could ask her when she's back from Costa Rica. But then we're down to researchers. Yeah, sure. So there's a, oh, have you ever heard of citizen scientists? Mm-hmm, well, I know the term. Yeah, so it might be, Good to clarify whether you're looking for citizen scientists or people with expertise, because I'm a citizen scientist. Okay. Just so you know, you know gotcha, gotcha. I used to work in a different kind of research, but not environmental research. But I, but I'm very, uh, you know, I'm in the, that area all the time, and and uh, and I've been doing my own little, you know, very uh, informal study essentially, but not with a particular motive other than finding out what's there. Well, I think so that's just to be clear. I appreciate that. Yeah. And I, yeah, I, I will check, but I believe that the, the law that created this commission does not have a particular requirement no. uh, in that area. Mm -hmm. And we're all lay people, and I think you're, right. you're certainly, you know, bring, bring it to the table that we would value. Yeah, person power anyways. Yep, yep. Yeah. Um, there is also a gentleman who uh, is a New Palms High School graduate. He's a senior in, uh, at SUNY Ethic, I believe, who attended one of our Wallkill, future of the Wallkill. Uh, meetings, who is so passionate, and he did a 49-page paper on the Wallkill in New, in New Paltz. Uh, he's an environmental engineering major, and he graduates in May and is coming home for a year, to take a year off before he goes to law school. And he really wants to be involved in that issue, so uh, I do plan on, uh, on uh, recruiting him heavily for, uh, for this, this, this body. Um, I wouldn't mind organizing researchers, citizen scientists. That's great. Yeah. That's great. But I think if you, if you do clarify, then you're going to have more people who are, who are like, well, I'm not a researcher. I can't do this. You know, 
It can be a lot of fun. And in my mind, a researcher is someone who does research. Yeah. And it doesn't require a special, you know, a special certificate. Yeah. Um, so I, I, uh, this uh, board is responsible to keep track of the planning board. There was, I think, the first joint meeting of the planning boards of the town and the village. Um, and it didn't make it on the agenda here, but we were going to talk about having a, inviting a, 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 making an invitation for a joint meeting with the town environmental commission. And uh, so I think I will, if we're all okay with that, I will extend that invitation tomorrow and see if they'd be interested as a, as a body. Don, the meeting uh, this month is going to occur next Wednesday. Uh, we don't have quorum. So it'll be an April 8th meeting over at the uh, community center. Okay. Yeah. Well, my thinking is we might be shooting for May because we don't meet again until till late, till late April. Uh -huh. So we'd be able to talk about your response and plan to get together as of then. Right. So that's probably how the timing would work out. Okay. But uh, I'll send an invitation uh, your way tomorrow. Um, but at the, uh, let, me just, let me just write this down as what happens. All right. So the uh, joint uh, planning board meetings, there was not a tremendous amount uh, that would be of uh, great import to this committee. Uh, they did they talk about having common standards for uh, Route 32. Uh, I think they looked to develop that, fewer curb cuts with all the buildings in the rear, uh, not to have road parking, which is kind of ugly. That would take some, some planning and, and coordination. Uh, there was discussion of the new CVS. Is that really happening? That seems to be really happening. There was discussion of where how the parking was going to work. So that sounds like something's really happening. Yeah. I was at the meeting uh, in, in March, I guess. Yeah. And it's not there. And I talked to uh, Lagusta, and she said it's not really, it's not happening yet. Okay. There's definitely time because I'm against it personally. And yeah. uh, it's, there's definitely time. Well, it's I get not it. moving forward. There's time for people who, who want to oppose okay. it to get programs. Well, I made the judgment that if they were talking about how the parking would work, that it was probably further along than it was. Okay, good. Thank you. My understanding was that they, they uh, are no longer pursuing the two variances. Did you hear that? What are the two? What are the two One was for a larger sign, and the other was for additional parking in front of the building. Right. Yeah. The parking issue came up, but the, the sign issue. So maybe they were only for parking that would have as opposed to the additional parking. Yeah, it was, uh, they didn't have substantial discussion of the issue, they just talked about the issue without getting into the details. So. Uh, something that kind of concerned me, there was discussion of common zoning on Main Street from the throughway to the bridge over the walk hill. And I was in the audience, I didn't have any place to speak, but I I kind of think that's, I'm concerned by that, because in my view, the top of Main Street looks like any areas. town USA, and when you get to the village, I mean, it really is distinct. So if they wanted to make common zoning that kept everything looking like the downtown, I'd be okay with that, but I'm, I'm kind of concerned. Somebody's but there did seem to be general consensus, and, and nobody yelling, hold on, this might not be a good idea, among the boards themselves the way I observed the discussion. Did they say why they want that? Um, there was, seemed to be agreement, generally, that uh, Main Street is pretty much the same. Um, and I didn't buy into that, but again, I was just an observer. Yeah. Uh, but why yeah, people from both the, the town board and the village board well, both kind of exactly you know, made the statement that it's all the same, and it's, it's all about commercial stuff, and it's all businesses, so you know, why don't we have the same zoning for all of it? And that was a point of their discussion. And, they kind of had a bit of consensus on that. Was and there a discussion about which way it would be limited? No, no. Uh, because there didn't seem to be a, 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 a real strong opinion voiced at the table that it was this or that. It's all the same. And I, it's all based on you know, a rather disturbing <laughs> piece of assumption on my part. So um, I. Uh, Looking at the faces in the room, I'm not alone in that. Um, maybe I can uh, uh, make the head of the village planning board aware of, of my opinion and the fact that it seemed to be one that, that had some some agreement. Um, just as you know, this cursory discussion at the uh, environmental policy commission, 
that's why we're supposed to weigh in on those planning issues. So I didn't want to say anything or do anything without seeing what other people felt. There was nothing actionable that was stated, just sort no, of. No, it was a, it was a long-term goal. Long -term goal. Um, and the fact that we are now in the MSW 14 community, which means we have new stormwater regulations was discussed. Um, they spoke about uh, the need for having rain gardens and landscaping strategies uh, for, for new development. But it is something that's a new designation that the town and village have, uh, and something that we will be dealing with in terms of uh, planning. And uh, uh, I do not understand beyond what was discussed at the planning board, you know, all the implications of the changes. So we'll need to learn a bit more about that. I'm a, I'm a wastewater guy, not a stormwater guy. So. John? As I understand, the, um, there may be a tie-in with this uh, technical assistance grant that New Paltz has received from EPA, uh, building blocks to sustainable communities. You guys are supposed to have a one to two day workshop sometime between now and June. I had mentioned, I asked the last meeting, Jason, I think you uh, had gotten in touch with Brent, who got back to me and said, there's no definite date yet. Is there any further development? I haven't heard any. I haven't yeah. heard the new date. Yeah, that that might be um, you know an opportunity to talk about this, and this is certainly one of the areas where the EPC and the Environmental Conservation Board could discuss what we each could do uh, that would allow the village and the town to be in compliance with MS4, because it's coming down. Uh, I can tell you that the town code doesn't have much in it that. <laughs> that is going to be protective. Uh, you know, we've, we've got to become more uh, rigorous in the way we're managing our storm water. This ties to any new construction, the additional uh, of, uh, impervious surface or alternative materials that are going to be used in parking lots, and streets, things of this sort. So it's, it's a big, big issue. Um, the one thing that comes up at the ENCB is when are we going to start to look at our, our code and begin to discuss how certain things need to be amended um, to, to, to go with this. Also, you know, other things come to mind a couple minutes back. You had mentioned this coordination between the EPC and the ENCB. There are lots of areas. Um, you know, you guys have, are, are doing climate smart communities. So are we in the town. Um, there's the zero waste pilot in 2012 that you know, Laura Petit uh, Bennett has had been involved in. You know, these are areas where there should certainly be communication between our two, our, our, our two committees. And I, I think it would be a nice, robust discussion whenever we do have it. Well, and, and I must take my, well, I'm not wearing a hat, a hat, I take it off to you for coming to our meeting recently and starting the process. Mm -hmm. And I'll be coming to yours and we'll, you know, we'll start, yeah. start doing that. So, so thanks for starting the initiative. Will that, um, that new designation will involve any retrofitting, or is it all just for new building projects? My understanding is it does involve retrofitting also. And um, it, it's something that takes place over a three-year period. So you know, initially, there's year one, and there are goals identified. I have with me a copy of the Stormwater Plan for the Town of New Falls. It's, um, I think that it had been signed at the tail end of October 2013. Um, and there are things that need to happen each year. They're using these yearly, you know, milestones mm -hmm. uh, to check in and see if they're they're on track. Um, uh, both the town and the village could, at any point, be, as I understand it, be inspected by New York State DEC, and you will find out if you're in compliance with MS4 or whether you need to do things. And sometimes the need to do things has, has costs to it and notices a violation. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, one of the things that I want to propose, kind of show my hand here, um, at the April 8th meeting is that uh, there be some sort of preliminary evaluation of the town's performance under its MS4, its stormwater plan. And just an identification, you know, maybe a couple of us would uh, go through the list that TEC has to see if the town is up to you know, schedule Good idea. Uh, and to let them know, hey, you know, we're potentially in violation here. You, you know, we, we've got to do this. Okay. Um, another issue uh, which I think might 
or will become something that we'll be looking at or at least weighing in on as it moves forward. Uh, they are looking for a, a site for a new bus terminal in uh, New Pulse. The lease is up on the current one, and I have been doing a slice of New Pulse on trailways, so I have all this information. Um, the current site is, is too small, the left turns on the main street during traffic times are just you know, really, really problematical for them. Um, they mentioned they, they were looking for walkable locations. Um, they mentioned the STS site had been looked at before it burned down. Um, they mentioned the pit was being looked at and a couple other sites which they didn't mention. But this is going to be the largest new construction project probably in, in, in New Paltz. Not the largest, but one of the more important. I think there will be environmental concerns. We're going to need to be engaged with the planning board as that, uh, as that process moves forward. So just a heads up, it's uh, coming down the pipe. Um, and I mentioned some other items. That was really the highlights of the, uh, the joint planning board meeting. Uh, so it is uh, eight ten. You want to spend ten minutes talking about uh, planning for a day? I could go. Can we have more minutes because we could simultaneously stack yeah. and talk. Thank you, Jason. And let, let me give a hat, uh, hats off to the mayor. While we've been talking, uh, Mayor Jason West has been uh, preparing uh, bags for our businesses in bundles of fifteen reusable American-made cloth bags, which the village purchased. Uh, thank you, Village of New Paltz. And he's been sitting back there uh, doing the work to get ready for the, these bags ready for distribution. So only thank half, you, sir. Only half the work. Only half the work of the, only half of the 800 bags uh, he did, yeah. So thank you for that. Sure, sure. No, I, my energy ran out. So for the viewing public, uh, the village of New Pulse uh, and a bunch of uh, volunteers working as individuals, but some of them also are on the EPC, uh, raised funds to uh, purchase about 2,000 of these bags. Uh, Phoebe Greco of Lucky Designs did the logo, so thank you to Phoebe. And the idea is to uh, provide uh, these bags at no cost uh, through the churches, through family, through Salvation Army, through the New Paltz School District, and also we're providing a number of them to businesses uh, free of charge for their customers. So uh, this is a real um, example of a community working together government and business and churches and, and social service agencies and doing the right thing. And it uh, doesn't happen enough in government, so hats off to us. So while we, uh, while we talk about Earth Day, we are going to, uh, we've got a box or two of these, these bags and we're going to get them 15 up, then 15 down, 15 up, then 15 down, so that when businesses come into the distributors, they will be sorted.
Let's talk about Earth Day, uh, which is uh, April 22nd. Rachel's. Oh, Rachel? We're going to, I'm sorry, we're going to talk about Earth Day. Just figure out what we're going to do for that. Then we can all go home. And to actually be a researcher, uh, you need to express your interest in an email or a letter to the village clerk. And then they will interview you. It's a tough interview process and appoint you at a village board meeting. Um, and that's clerk at villageofnewpolts.org. So Earth Day, we definitely want to uh, do something with our, with our uh, signage at the Walk Hill. I guess we want to probably have it up before then, but we could, or do we want to put it up on Earth Day? That's a question. Yeah. The benefit to having it already up would be that we can have a picture of it at the table, and the downside to putting it up that day would be that it is not a long walk, but it is a long enough walk that there are going to be people who are like, I don't want to walk all the way down there to watch you put the sign. Yeah, well, I, the ribbon spend. cutting kind of sounded like it might have worked better. Yeah, I'd like better. to get it up sooner rather than later. So if we you guys put it up or do you do it? Uh, we've never put up signs before, so yeah. we'll do that. So we should have them in hand next week. Uh, we'll assume, yeah, as soon as they get from the DPW, you can put them up. Great. We have ribbon cutting for a sign that says the river's polluted. Don't <laughs> 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 yeah, we, we, we could do it. We could all be wearing hazmat suits when we do it. <laughs> Recycled really cool. paper uh, <laughs> ribbon. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Yeah, all right. Right. <laughs> That's the party. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> Came up with that idea anyway. It's, it's yeah, yeah. So the village board's going to meet next week. Maybe we could ask them, give them a couple choices and see how they want to acknowledge Earth Day with the EPC. We could focus on the bad band, and we could focus on the river keeper signs. Or we could just focus on the EPC in general. Yeah. And each one of us could sort of make like a, I don't want to say flyer, but like something nice that sort of has like a highlight of something that we've done in the year, like the plastic bag band, like solar panel tree lights, like looking at alternative energy for village hall, or the um, garbage. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know the river. So. We can have maybe like one of the folding boards, or just something that kind of outlines, you know, what we're, what we've done, what we'd like to do. That way, we're not just focused on one thing, and people who have different interests might see it and be like, "Oh, that's pretty cool. Maybe I want to get about." There was um, some discussion a long ways back when we were still working on the nuts and bolts of the plastic bag ban um, about getting information to people in regards to the care and treatment of bags or some kind of informational leaflet. I don't, we sort of never continued with that discussion, but that's Whose something. Whose issue is that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's something that uh, we could continue talking about in terms of whether or not we want to mail it out, but it's certainly something we can make available for the Earth Day event, just sort of a one page, one pager. Here's what the law says, here's where to get a bag, here's how you care for them, some sort of item like that. That sounds good. Um, now, do we want to do, do something, have a photo up on Earth Day? Or the Earth Day event, I believe, is on the 24th. 26th. Yeah, 26th? Yeah. Yeah. On Huguenot Street. So we will be there. Um, do we also want to do something on Earth Day itself? And do we want to do something jointly with the village board? Or do we want to just do something on our own? That's kind of. When you say something, what do you mean? Like a photo op. Of what? Um, well, the ribbon cutting idea didn't go over too well after discussion. <laughs> I kind of feel like we already had our photo op because we, we did that thing in the New Post Times article. I think that, yeah. And I think that having a table at Earth Day is like a, an in-person photo op. Yeah. You know? Yeah, Will we have bags to give out to? Yeah. Yeah, holding some back. Yeah. yeah. I'd rather um, have a table to converse with people and educate people rather than focus on getting a picture taken. Yeah. And I think there's going to be so much going on at Earth Day that we get lost in the sauce anyways. Yeah. Hopefully. I mean, I think that it's just a nice idea if people are walking from table to table that they could stop, maybe learn something new, maybe find out that they're interested in something that they didn't know was going on in the community. I just think that like it's a good idea to get our commission out there because even though we're here every Tuesday night, we don't. Yeah. I don't. I think a lot of people don't really know, and you know we posted a couple things on Facebook, but I just think it would be a good idea to really like 
have this have like a face to face interaction with the community. Like Might be able to find some more researchers there too. Yeah. All right. Then, you, sure, of course. Um, just touching on the discussion we had earlier about tributary 13 and the interest in you know, assessing the water quality there and the citizen science work. Maybe you want to sign up for people who would like to participate in that. That's great. The other thing that, that's come up in discussions we've had over at the Review Center, is Laura Pettit's very concerned about this, um, is the shipping away of the ash trees and the animal ash ore. Um, maybe there could be a citizen science project to begin to identify this, the ash trees that are within the village. But just so you know where they are and to assess their health, uh, you know, there, there could be some citizen science projects yeah. and you can sign people up. But okay. I think the spirit's going to be running high that day. Yeah, that's true. That's true. All right. Sign up for volunteers. Um, I could spend some time at the table if I knew what time it was. And it's it's a Saturday afternoon event, I believe. It's 11 to 3. Oh, it says on the Saturday website. Or Sunday? No, Sunday, April 26th. So maybe if we do it in shifts, I don't know if everybody can go, but like if a couple of us take a shift. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm there for my filter company. All right. I can go from table to table. Question about the it. table itself, the physical table. Are these provided? Do yes. you rent them? They're already there. It's church. They're provided. You have to provide. Okay. You personally. <laughs> I, well, I have tables. That's why I ask. Of course. <laughs> All right. I will be there that day. Okay. I think we just uh, decided what we're going to do for Earth Day. All right. So I'll follow up with the village board. Uh, what did you say? Oh, and yeah, get the signs paid for next Wednesday. We will I've got all my notes here, so I'll follow up and I'll probably uh, prepare next month's agenda based on this and get that to you next next couple of days. Don, do you know who's in charge of that event? Is it the church? Oh uh, yes, it's the Re Reformed Church, and Jim O'Dowd does, does the project management. Andrew just pointed out, do we want to reach out and just let him know that we'd like a table, or? You know, oh, we we would have to do that. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and I'll do that. All right. All right. All right. Jim O'Dowd. I think we are uh, got a lot covered this week, and uh, appreciate your all uh, input. And, and we uh, can we give out some seats? Dodge having sure, we dodge having an extra meeting, and uh, next time we meet will be post Earth Day and post plastic bag roll. There we go. Oh, so I, have, I have a display. I've, you know, I've told you that, right? I have like a display of water. Oh, it's for the for the for the Earth Day thing. Yeah. Excellent. Cool. All right. All right, Team EPC, another good month. Don, do you have to officially adjourn? We are adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>